Okay, and I think this part goes on there. Okay, wow. It only took me an hour. Oh, hey y'all. Man, hey, it's good to see y'all. I'm glad that you're able to be here today. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys like Legos. You know, I love Legos. My kids, uh, I was given this Lego and it's a, the, a, a Star Destroyer. Well, I, think, I can't remember. Or Imperial Cruiser is what it's called. Uh, from Star Wars and asked me if I could put it together and I said sure you know it's a Lego I mean it, I think the age was 7 to 12 and of course I'm a few years older than that so I thought not a problem I can do it the only thing is I didn't realize is there were no instructions and so I've just had to try to figure this out with just a picture and but I think I got it I think it looks pretty cool I think they'll be happy to play with it you know I might even play with it so but anyway it reminds me of have you ever gotten involved in something and realized that it was way more than what you expected you know somebody said hey you want to go do this you're like yeah and next thing you know it's way more involved or it takes way much more time well you know I think that happens to us all the time. And, and what I want to do is I want to spend a little time today and talk to you about, you know, social media. I know uh, you guys and girls are at, at a point in time in your life where you're really wanting to get a, a smartphone. You're wanting to, to get on Instagram possibly or Snapchat and, and TikTok and all those types of things. And, um, you know, you're just so eager to jump in it. Maybe your friends have it, you know, well, mom, dad, you know, my best friend has it or my friends at school have it and I want to have it and all that kind of stuff. And, and you know, social media, social media can have, can be very awesome, but it can also be very slippery and very dangerous and get you in trouble. And, and, and so what I want to do today is, is wherever you are in that spectrum, maybe you already have a smartphone, maybe you're already involved in social media to some degree, but, but, but the Bible tells us, you know, Jesus told a, a story, uh, and let me read it to you. It's found in Luke chapter 14, verses 25 through 32. It says, a large crowd was following Jesus, and he turned around and said to them, if you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else, your father, your mother, a wife, or children, or brothers and sisters, yes, even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. And so what was Jesus trying to do? It was he was trying to help the people to see if you want to follow me, it's going to require sacrifice. It's going to require maybe you not spending as much time with your family. You know, like for instance, you know, we live in South Georgia now, but I'm a native Texan. And so my family's all 16 hours away from me back home. And so I literally had to leave them, bring my family to Georgia. Now, I know this is where God wants me to be, and I'm grateful to be here, but yet it still is a sacrifice. And that's what he was saying here. But he says in verse 28, do not begin until you count the cost. He says, for who would begin construction of a building without first calculating the cost to see if there's enough money to finish it? Otherwise, you might complete only a foundation before running out of money, and then everyone would laugh at you. They would say, there's the person who started that building and couldn't afford to finish it. And that's what I want to keep from happening with you in regards to whether you have social media or not or what platform you have or to what degree uh, social media uh, has a, what, to what degree of influence does it have in your life. And I want you to count the cost. And that's what I want to talk about today is I want to give you a couple of things to think about. I want to give you a couple of tools to put in your belt, you know, to help you when you begin to walk down this path towards social media. Because the, he says you will be wise. God says, Jesus says you'll be wise if you count the cost. And so I just want to give you a couple of things to think about. You know, above all, you know, I pray that you'll listen to your parents and your pastors about, you know, wisdom when it comes to this. But let's pray together and then let's dive into this topic. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to spend time with these young people today. 
Father, I pray that you would bless them. Father, they need your wisdom and your discernment to live in a way that's honoring to you. That God, in our world today, there is so easy to get involved in things that can hurt us, that can bring dishonor to you, that can bring dishonor to our families, that can hurt us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And so God, I pray that when we really look at specifically media and social media in the lives of teenagers today and, and, and preteens, God, that you would give us your wisdom and speak to us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, here's the thing is if you're going to begin to walk down that path, it is I believe that a smartphone, I believe that social media and those types of things are mature things to have. And so you're going to have to really step up your game and be mature about this and to really think about this, especially when you want to start to approach your parents about this. You know, that whole thing of, well, just because little Johnny or little Susie has it, that's really not going to work for them. So what I want you to do is, number one is, is I want you to think about it. And I want you to ask the right questions. Why do you want to be on social media? Have you ever stopped to think about that? I'll be honest, when I got on social media, I never thought about that. Everybody was kind of doing it. Now, I was an adult because they didn't have smartphones when I was your age. You know, you know what a smartphone was when I was your age? It was a quarter that was stuck in your shoe or in your wallet so you could stop and use the pay phone if you got into trouble. That's That was a smartphone. So, you know, but, but uh, and so many preteens today, you know, or, or teenagers today, when they start to walk down that path, they don't even they, they don't even ask, why do I want to be on social media? What am I wanting to get out of it? What are you wanting to get out of it? You know, what what's the goal there? I mean, you're like, well, God, that's kind of dumb. I just want to be on social media. I want to connect with my friends. Well, okay, that's a reason. And that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad reason, but really take some time and write them down. What am I wanting to get out of it? Why do I really want to be on social media? And are there other and maybe even more safer ways that I can achieve those results for why I want to be on social media? Is there another way or even a safer way? Because social media is dangerous. The internet can be very dangerous. It can be also very wonderful and very helpful and very useful and very encouraging, but it also can be very dangerous and can hurt you and can harm you and your family. And so you have to say, are there other ways that I can achieve that? If it's socialization, are there other ways that you can achieve that socialization without social media in your life right now? And ask this question, are you mature enough? Am I mature enough right now to handle social media and the amount of influence that it will have over my life? And see, that's one of the biggest things is even if you're only looking at things that you need to be looking at and 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 going to sites that you need to go to, it's still the amount, the time, the volume of influence that social media has on your life. It, it affects you. It impacts you. And so are you mature enough? to handle that. And number two, when you think about it is, is you need to understand the risk and the rewards of entering the realm of social media. See, it can be very addictive. It can be you, I I don't know how much you keep up with news today, but with all that's going on, you know, people sharing their opinions on social media and people getting mad at them sharing those opinion on social media. See, one of the things about social media is it's one of the most easily misunderstood forms of communication. And to me, it's also one of the shallowest that people cannot really see necessarily the the real you in it. So think about it. Really take some time and to think about it. Be, be smart. Okay, a smartphone and social media are big boy and big girl toys, you know, or tools. You need to be a big boy and a big girl about it and really take some time and to think about it and to ask the right questions of why are you wanting to be on it? What do you think you're going to get out of it? And what are your goals? What do you want to get out of it? And, you know, are there other ways that you can achieve those goals? And do you understand the risk and the rewards that come with that? And the second thing I want you to do, you know, before you jump into this or even now as you're in the middle of it, you know, you need to be thinking you know, and seeking wisdom from other people. So think, really think about it. Number two, really seek wisdom from other people. See, you need to realize that at your stage of development, you still have a lot to learn. 
Now, now I'm not I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm not trying to call you a baby. That's not it at all. But even at my age, okay, and you could tell I'm a little I got a little bit of gray. I'm a little bit older than you, okay? You know, I've made I've had which only means I've had more opportunity to make more mistakes and to hopefully learn from those mistakes. But even at my my age, I still realize that I have a lot to learn still and I'm learning every day. And so I want you to realize that it's important for you to seek wisdom from other people because at your stage of development, you're even more so have so much to learn and there's limits to to what you can do. You need help to see all the sides of this thing called social media and and you're getting involved in that. But when you seek wisdom, seek wisdom from other people, Seek it from those that are smarter and wiser than you. Now, hey, I'm sure there's some pretty incredibly smart fifth through eighth graders, okay? Probably way smarter than I ever am right now or ever was when I was a fifth through eighth grader. But still, there's so much that fifth through eighth graders don't know and haven't learned and don't necessarily understand the way things work. And so seek those who are smarter and wiser you and and really those who really care about your well-being. You know, you're like, well, my best friend, you know, they really care about my well-being. And, and, and to their degree that they can, they probably do care about your well-being. But there's nobody that cares about your well-being more than God. And then physically on this earth, there's nobody that cares about your well-being more than your mom and your dad and your grandmother and your grandfather and your aunts and your uncles and, you know, your relatives. And and hopefully, even though maybe they don't show it all the time, your brothers and your older brothers and sisters or younger brothers and sisters, they're invested in you. Man, seek their wisdom. Why? Because they are super concerned about what happens in your life. You're like, well, my parents are always telling me no all the time. Well, maybe there's a reason why they're telling you no sometimes. It's not, it's because they care about you. So just think about this. When they tell you no or not yet or not right now, it's not to hold you down or to oppress you, but it's to protect you. And so seek wisdom from other people and then get a game plan. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 12, that there's a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. And so what is he trying to say? What's God trying to say there is, is that I need to get a plan and my plan needs to involve the wisdom of other people, the counsel of God, the counsel of my pastor, my youth pastor, my children's minister, my mom, my dad, my grandparents. Man, I'm going to tell you what, you know, I, I, we're celebrating Father's Day uh, coming up. And at the time that I'm, I'm videoing this, and I've been thinking back at all the godly men that have been in my life, you know, and so seek their wisdom, seek God's wisdom through them, you know, because if you think, try to think of it on your own, I don't think about everything. You know, have you ever gotten involved in something and it didn't necessarily go right and your parents go, what were you thinking? And you're like, well, at the time I really thought I was thinking, but now that I look back at it, I probably really wasn't thinking that much at all. That's what happens. We need to get a game plan about that. We need to trust our limitations, know that we have limitations. Jeremiah 17 says, the human heart is the most deceitful of all things. It's desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? And what is he trying to say there? That sometimes I can want something so bad that I think about it long enough, I can't think of a negative reason for having it. You know, ooh, if I'm trying to eat right, man, that Snickers bar, man, I love, oh, homemade chocolate chip cookies. Let's get real. Who doesn't like homemade chocolate chip cookies? Man, I love homemade chocolate chip cookies. I think the only cookie that I, well, there's two other cookies that I like more than chocolate chip cookies, maybe three. Uh, Snickerdoodles, whew, those are so good. Peanut butter cookies and oatmeal raisin. Man, well, I maybe like chocolate chip better than that. The point that I'm trying to say is, is that I can think about wanting a cookie so bad, but truthfully, 
you know, I already had three of them, and so one more is not good for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not in balance with it. And so we need to we need to get a game plan and have some guidelines and boundaries because we can get so fixated on something that we completely lose out the wisdom, you know, and, and, and how to, to walk through this. So have guidelines or boundaries. That's what I mean when I say get a game plan. Develop guidelines and boundaries, and truthfully, don't count on yourself to come up with those. You need to get your parents, you need to get your pastor or your youth pastor involved. Well, I'm not going to ask them about that. Why not? They're totally invested in your spiritual, your spiritual well-being. You know, um, because when we try to go at our loan, that's when we get attacked. Ecclesiastes 4.9 says it like this. Two people are better than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But if someone who falls alone but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. See, the devil wants to destroy you and me. Now, I'm not trying to scare you. You know, God is greater than the devil. The devil is defeated, but when the devil, and he tempts us, but when we are by ourselves, we can tend to give in a lot more easier than we would if we had other people involved in that. Get a game plan. Get boundaries in place. Get help with those. Ask your mom and dad. And it goes to how much time am I going to spend on it? You know, what aspects of social media am I going to begin to get involved in? Are those, you know, is Twitter too mature for me? Is Snapchat too mature for me? You know, what are the risks of each of those? And and, and is that something I want to give all of Because I'm telling you, like if you go and grab a, a tube of toothpaste and you squeeze it really hard, what's going to come out? Toothpaste. And what happens to that toothpaste? You can never put it back in the tube. Man, listen, what you choose to see through social media, you can't unsee. It's in there. It's done its damage. You know, what you get involved in, you know, we have to be really careful with that. So get help with these. Don't trust yourself to come up with guidelines and boundaries. You know, my guideline for me might, hey, only four chocolate chip cookies a day, when really, maybe I only need four a week or one a week. Why? Because I know that all of that sugar and the processed foods that are in chocolate chip cookies are not good for me. They're not healthy for me. They don't fuel my body like my body needs to be fueled. Now, are they okay to have every once in a while? Yeah, but not four a day. Well, I thought about it, and I really wanted five a day, but I went to four a day. Now, see, you need some, that, that's where, that's if you're married, that's where your wife comes in. She's like, no, I'm telling you right now, you don't need no five cookies a day. Get help. Don't trust yourself to come with that. And then be accountable. I'm telling you right now, if you cannot get on social media and have complete transparency with your parents, then you don't really need to be on social media right now. Why? Because at your age, you're you, it's you're not mature enough. I, I, I'm sorry, we're not mature enough. I'm account. I'm a grown man, and I'm accountable to to my social media. I'm accountable to the thing. I have accountability in my life. Why? Because I know that the heart is naturally wicked that apart from the compelling of and the controlling of the, the Holy Spirit in my life, you know, because I have a relationship with Jesus, I, I can do those things and go and go those places and get in trouble. And so be accountable. So what am I trying to say? Should you be involved in social media or not? Well, I do know this. In my opinion, it's a very mature thing to be involved in. And truthfully, maybe right now, there's other ways that you can achieve the results that you want to achieve than not being in social media. But if you're already involved in it, and if your parents are okay with you getting involved with it, then you need to think about it. Really count the cost. Don't, don't be the person that gets on social media and crashes and burns and then everybody's laughing at you. Go, see, see, they weren't ready. What a fool. They, they, they didn't count the cost. You know, think about it. Ask the right questions. Why do you want, what's your motives and intentions behind it? And understand that there are rewards to it, but there are also great risks to it. Seek wisdom from others. The, and specifically from those who are 
totally invested in you. Man, I'm telling you, I can't help but believe you've got a really cool mom and dad. You might not completely understand them right now, but I really believe you've got a cool mom and dad that loves you, okay? For one, they're wanting you to watch this, and so that's pretty awesome, okay? They're invested in you. Your grandma and grandpa are invested in you. Your pastor, your children's minister, your youth pastor is invested in you. You know, seek their wisdom, okay? Knowing that they really care about you and then get a game plan. And I guarantee you, as you trust the Lord, the Bible says this, uh, trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your, on your own understandings, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So what does that mean? Acknowledge your need for God in this situation as you discuss social media and its influence and impact and error and in its footprint in your life. Don't trust your own understanding. Seek God above all things and know that he will direct your path. You seek God and he'll direct your path through your mom and through your dad. Seek God and he'll direct your path through those who are invested in your life. Seek God above all things and he will direct you and lead you and then this will be a very positive experience for you. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for our time together. Father, um, there are some incredible rewards, but some very, 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 very high risk when it comes to being involved in social media. And Father, so often we don't understand how easy it is for us to slip up when it comes to this area. And God, that we don't really realize how vulnerable we can be to the devil and to temptation that comes through social media and its platform. And so, God, I pray that these students, Father, would you would, as they seek you with all their hearts, that you would give them wisdom to really honestly take a look at it and, and really ask the tough questions and allow you to guide them to, to the answers and that they would open their these questions up to their moms and dads and their pastors and and those who are spiritually in, who are invested in their their well-being and God that they would seek their wisdom father that they would get a game plan and that game plan might be you know what maybe this is something that I do in a year or two or maybe I start here and and only here and and be okay with that but to get a game plan to have boundaries set in place so it will not be a foothold for the devil to come in and to to hurt them, and to destroy them. Father, thank you. I pray that you give them a great summer. God, I know that we're still having to meet virtually in so many ways because of this pandemic. God, that your hedge of protection would be over them and over their families. Father, that you would provide a safe place that they can come back to gather in churches and in groups and at camps. Father, to bring honor and glory to you. And Father, that you would work out that they could get back in school in a safe way where they can be around their friends and that they could they could begin to learn, um, Father, in that atmosphere again. Father, but above all, help them to know how much you love and care for them and desire a relationship with them and the, knowing that the greatest decision, decision that they could ever make would be to give their lives to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. May God bless you and God keep you.